And welcome back. This is Coattown for another War Rights event. Um, uh, it's Saturday, so I hope everybody's having a good weekend so far. Um, I might be having a guest join me in a little bit here. Yeah, but yeah. Oh. I got back just in time. Oh, there he is. I was like, oh, there shit. <laughs> uh, so, uh, as you guys could hear, um, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Fuji, is joining us for another UEC event. How you doing, brother? Doing good. Doing good. Especially after yesterday's matches, they were fun to watch. Oh yeah, we had two super close ones. I'm hoping we got another two good close matches this time. Uh, looking at it, looks like we got an Otto and Sherrick. 304 on the uh, current server count. 164 for the CSA defending versus... I'm sorry, 155 for the defending CSA versus 149 for the attacking Union. Let's take a look at that Union team to start out with. He's starting out with Artie. Looks like we got 52nd under Fleischer. And let's see. Then we've also got Hendricks from the 52nd. And then 3rd Alabama, or uh, Jeff Davis better, I should say, under Lieutenant Fork. Let's see. On the infantry side, we have the 1st Virginia. We have the SB, the 51st New York, 2nd USC, the Dad's Army folks right there. Then we've got the GC, German Corps. And we've got TB, Tennessee Brigade, 3rd Alabama, and the 6th New York, and the 88th New York's with them, so the entire NYV. So officers-wise, we've got Eddie leading 2 USC, Knight leading TB, Dot Point leading the SB, NYV led by Parker, and Williamson leading 3rd Alabama. Right. And swinging over to the CSA team. Looks so like we've got LFL, 6 Texas, 56 Virginia, Alabama German Legion, 4th Georgia, 20th Georgia, and then the ANV. Officer wise, we've got Slaughter leading 56, Lyferic leading ANV, 6 Alabama under Max Fears, Mark under LFL, Rousseau under 6 Texas, Jumbo leading 20th, and Major Clarkey leading 4th Georgia. So, uh, I don't think we... Did we see Clarky? I think... Yeah, that... he was in yesterday's rounds, but he wasn't leading anything. Was That's right. I think I saw him on the flag one time. That's right, yeah. Yes, he, I think he picked up the flag at one point. But yes, he is... But he looks like he's leading the uh, round today. Yep, so what uh, what kind of leadership is... Uh, are you expecting to see? What, what kind of style does uh, Clarky usually uh, have? Uh, especially on defense. Uh, on defense... Uh... Well, it depends on the size of our line. Um, we have a relatively sizable line, so um, in terms of our regimental numbers, that is. So I'm expecting him to, as we're defending, find a good strong point to defend. Um, typically, we try to not get ourselves killed. Oh, looks like everyone's moving out, though. Um, so yeah, I'm expecting some really good defensive plays, maybe exploiting any Union units that find themselves isolated, which could be a good idea, um, especially after yesterday's. Um, from what I saw yesterday, there were a lot of people uh, overextending themselves when they're on the attack and allowing the defenders to basically take them out on their own one by one. Uh, but uh, one thing we'll have to see is, will the defenders overcommit? And will they extend themselves too far when trying to basically repulse an attack? I'll have to see. This one is, uh, this is a tough one for the defender. And looking at the art, it looks like Fort George's got a battery as well. He just got yes. nailed by a counter battery shot, though. Poor, uh, uh, poor Carl really, here got hit over really. on this far right side. Yes, we uh, we now have a proper permanent uh, artillery battery. So I, I, we expect to see them pretty much every time we are around. Yep, and then just taking a look at the other Artie, looks like Embat from Perkington out on this what? left side. Just taking a oh, shot there. Oh. Yes, beautiful. And some nice damage, and then we've also oh, got yeah, the VA bad here under Carlton. 
And it looks like, let me shut up, because it looks like we got a forward attack already. Yep, looks like fourth Georgia over there just did the first volley against the incoming federal units. And that's the third Alabama, the 20th New York. Weird amalgamation there, just GCs there. So, it looks like the Union is focusing hard on the Union on the Confederate left, which is it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out because you can see Confederates have that high ground. It's not, not the biggest of high grounds, but it's definitely a high ground. So, and you can see a lot of. There's a, what was that, the 6th Texas, ANV, 20th, just that huge Confederate line set up inside that sort of garden, picket fence area there. And just hit, I've got to zoom out, I can't hear anything from all the volleying. Uh, looks like we got a gunfight going on because uh, we still have that, that no bayonets until 30 minutes. No, no bayonets on sprinting, and I think uh, usually I find, I don't know if you agree, that this map is very tough on the defenders. Uh, this is one of those times where I think the 30-minute rule might make this a little bit more of a contest. I I agree. I mean, obviously, a, a lot... Oh, I just watched... Uh, what was that? Uh, VA Battery oh. A. They just pasted a line here uh, on the, from the Union side. The SB, 51st New York, just took a huge hit from the Confederate artillery there. Which oh, their line yeah. is gone. I, I, I didn't see the splash, but I see the impact here with this big red yeah, puddle down. Yeah, I just watched that happen. It, that's that's devastating there. Uh, yeah, Hardy can make some... a uh, big difference on this. Um, I, I'm not a big fan of staying down here as the Union. I agree. The I, I agree. They really need to push, and it looks like the Union are trying to push. I mean, they've they've moved the Confederates off that slight hill forward position there by the rocks. Uh, that is with the NYV. They've taken that. Under, uh, so Parker's led his men forwards. It's probably the best bet because uh, you really need to push forward and if you can't take the guns, at least neutralize them because they're going to be your biggest threat at the moment here, especially when they have this, this, this loaded canister. Oh yeah, I would, I would definitely agree. And that rock tends to be Parker's rock. He, he, he loves that position on this map. Yeah. Uh, the Confederate artillery just uh, slightly whiffed their shot to the left of that huge Union line there. Um, but any, any solid hit is going to devastate a Union attack on this Confederate Oh, it looks like your boys, Fort George, just got nailed by an Arnie shot though from the Union. Yeah. Trying to uh, punch TB a little bit there. Yeah, there's... It's definitely a bit of a, a lot of gunfighting going on around here, which is to be expected for the first 10 minutes of this game. Yeah, I, I would say, though, uh, right now, ticket-wise, I mean, we'll see if it changes in the next five minutes, but this pace is not bad if the uh, CSA can maintain it. If the CSA can maintain this, I suppose it could be good, but... I mean, they're even on the tickets, but as they're on the defense, like we said uh, yesterday, they uh, they have that lower ticket count, but they do have very good defensive positions here. Um, so the Union's going for the early cap. I, I, did, I didn't even see who did that cap, and I, I don't uh, even know who did it. it. I don't actually know, but they've done it. Uh, I didn't see that either. But it looks like 6th Texas is going to go straight in, so Roos is going to lead his men straight in to try and decap that straight away. Yeah, I, th I think that's the right call. I mean, you don't want to yeah, let him, I... uh, let the timer get away from you. We're just talking yeah, about the time. Yeah, you want to you wanna make, make sure that you can uh, maintain this, because you, you've really got to make them pay for this uh, attack. I mean, you can see that a lot of Union corpses just got in front of the A and V there in that field there. Uh, it looks like the Union concentrating hard on that hill, though. Which is, it's going to be the best, I think, in my opinion, the easiest thing to attack because there's no fences to uh, climb over or anything. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. I, I always think going on this left side is a bit of a. Uh, they just get too hung up with all the fences and the 
the obstacles. It, it's tough to you get bogged down in there. I find. Yeah, you, I mean, if you have a look, you'll see a lot of the casualties. They're all centered around yeah. the fences. Oh, look at this! Jumbo's coming right up here. Oh, yeah, he's going straight in. Left oblique in the Very risky move here, but will it pay off? We've got. Oh, Eddie down here. Oh, there was an officer there. The TB. Well, I think I think maybe he's trying to keep the union busy while they recap. If he stays here for long, it's a mistake. Um, and in fact, it looks like he's getting out of there. Yeah. Smartly, he's decided to pull out, which is a good idea. Uh, so that's a good move by the Confederacy. Nice to see that uh, they didn't overstay their welcome. So Russo's leading his men in, though. Um, Oh, this? I don't know about this. I, I'm i unsure of this move. Um, although it has decimated a lot of the Union forces here. So we'll see how it plays now. That first volley went in favor of the Confederates. But uh, how is it going to how's it gonna play out? Because he looks like he's staying here. Oh, never mind. Oh, he's getting out of there uh, now, yeah. Uh, whoever did the call to pull out uh, definitely a smart idea, although most of the six Texas is going to find themselves dead. It looks like. yeah, I don't, I don't uh, know if that attack was worth it. Looking at the tickets right now. No, I, it, I don't think it was worth it. I mean, I think that first volley was good, but they should have pulled out straight away. They should just uh, fired. I, I think I, I, I would agree with you, yeah. Union's now moving up on the hill, though. So NYV in 3rd Alabama have moved up. Oh, that's a lethal combo right there. Holy Indeed, that is as a that's two very significant lines that have now moved up on that flank. That's it's going to be certainly a interesting move and see how the Confederates are going to counter that. Uh, now they do have artillery facing right down at them, but it looks like Williams is moving in. Williamson's moving in. Yeah, that's the key. Is now don't let Artie get you. Uh... No, he's, he's fought, that artillery is not able to zero in properly, which is, yeah, okay, and there we go. He's doing, he's wisely firing and pulling back, back down into the hill, into cover. Yeah, these these micro movements at this close range are very hard to adjust for, for the yeah. arty, because it's such it a big like, uh, SB's come to reinforce this flank as well. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I was, you know, we were talking about the time earlier. And you know, part of it was the counterattack, but now, now you know, I think we were at 35. Now we're at 32. Yes. It's a very different situation now. Very different. But uh, Confederates still have those cannon, and the Union forces are so. That, are they? Yep, they're all being quite smart about this. They're firing and pulling back, so they are not allowing the uh, Confederates to get proper zero in on them. And yeah, as you were saying just a minute earlier, this close range, that's, that's going to be hard to adjust for. You got the unit to a white flank. No, real, really, the already what you got to do is kind of just try to anticipate, okay, yeah. where do I think they're going to be, and just wait for them to pull up. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, would, I would set it up look where they're moving up and back down, because they seem, they seem to have a pattern when doing this. So you just line up where they're going to move out and just fire right there. Obviously, that's easier said than done. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's very easy for us sitting above to be like, hey, just do this, you know. Uh, indeed, it's easier for us to say things. Um, again, uh, I was talking to some of my guys from uh, the, about the match. And in fact, I was actually speaking to another regiment, uh, the 2 Corps, about that. And they were, some, they were saying some things, and they had no idea about what was actually going on sometimes in terms of the, the flanking maneuvers of other allied regiments. So that fog of war definitely comes into play. Oh yeah, absolutely. And again, anything, any comments that are made, it's just to help, you know, to point out things that you might not have seen and may not have been able to see, but, you know, just to keep things in your mind and know for next time. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I certainly don't claim to be the uh, the god of tactics of the War of Rights community. I'm far from that. I just run around in a line and shoot people. That's about all I do. Looking for spines and teeth and oh, yes. other assorted organs. Oh yes, we need many organs and pieces for the uh, the special ritual. Oh, I just saw a huge artillery hit on the Union line there, though. Uh, NYV taking a bit of a hit, it seems. Ooh, I, of course I was on the other side of the map. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit infamous at this point for not catching arty shots. 
Checks and ready, now, checks and ready. Again, though, it looks like it's still... I mean, we've reached that 30-minute mark, so bayonets and sprinting are allowed, so I'm expecting to see some serious charges from the Union side now. Um, because, I mean, looking down at where the Union lines are on this hill, there's a lot of bodies here. I mean, I know they're on the attacks, so they can... They have that extra casualty uh, def, uh, buffer. Oh, absolutely. And, and I think they did their job here. We're a little bit below 30 minutes. Oh, they're ahead oh, on yeah. pickets and close to engage. Yeah, I mean, they've taken a lot of casualties, but they're still higher than the Confederates. And I think they're in a good position, really. Um, just got to see if the uh, Union artillery can land a pretty solid hit on the Confederate lines. And open, make an opening for the Confederates. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would also, to be honest, with you, I'd, I'd even just risk a melee. Yeah, and it, it looks like that's what Williamson's doing. He's charged in the third Alabama into that fence. Like the SB's coming in, and the ANV on the Confederate side is moving in to counter that, it looks like. And then there comes a canister shot from the VA battery A to devastate the Union. Oh, wow, that did tons of damage, yeah. A lot of stuff has happened. It looks like Fred Alabama's going to pull out for that. They have, they have had enough. Oh, but here comes Parker. Whitley, the flag, ran into the Confederate line, which is very interesting to see. Um, and that he's so the Federals are going to lose a flag for one of their regiments, which was a very strange move on that man's part. Uh, I mean, maybe it's not over yet. We got Parker and Eddie still in the in this fight oh, on this other side. Certainly not. It looks like we got more Union forces coming. Oh, here in. comes Clark though with the counter charge oh, yeah i mean i think uh, the momentum that these confederates have uh, that's Please, going to definitely back. wipe out what they So they're wisely no, not going to overcommit, although I think they could have probably wiped out the rest of the union forces on this hill oh there's that already coming in yep um i mean that's the thing though i mean union didn't lose that bridgehead and they no, can they reset didn't. and do it again if they want to. Exactly. They didn't lose that bridgehead. Parker and Connor here with the uh, first Virginia. They've managed to um, maintain their hold on the at the foot of this hill um, because of that uh, in a, uh, or the unwillingness to push home that attack. Again, that's the fog of war for you. And uh, that has now allowed the Union to reinforce on, the boys. hill. So they've got some significant forces here. Yeah. So it looks like the Union did lose one flag, but they still got their others. Yes. So I was saying that earlier. For some reason, that flag bearer for that Union regiment ran into the Confederate charge on his own, which was quite confusing. Um, don't know why you'd do that. Maybe he got a little bit confused. Yeah, yeah, possibly. Again, like you said, flag of war. Sometimes people say charge, and everybody just goes in. And the flag, you got to keep very much aware how important you are as the flag bearer. He, maybe the flag bearer got stabbed, uh, so he had um, that gray vision. So a very, maybe very possible. Really and that's that, I've done that multiple times. I've ran into the enemy line. Oh, it was mine. Good job. No. Uh, but so the Union are going to maintain that hold because now we have the NYV and the uh, GC here holding that hold, holding that small foothead, or foothold. Sorry, but the Confederates they're going to resume their positions on the uh, the picket fence. Although it looks like artillery softened it up now, so there is no longer a fence to climb over in the portion of it. There is a huge opening there mm. where you can just rush in there if you want to melee. I just saw a counter battery shot here yeah. from, I believe, your guys. Yeah, I mean, I oh, just no, that was LFL, thought yeah. you take some significant losses from a volley there. So the Union artillery is definitely, definitely doing a good work, especially making a huge hole in that picket fence, that's going to be a very good advantage for any future bayonet charges. Uh, I imagine if Williamson had that huge opening there, he would have probably done some decent damage to the Confederate Oh, there comes another shot. Yeah, this is great shopping, removing that obstacle. Even though you can't, it's not, you know, it's not, uh, you know, cover. It's not going to stop bullets. It's still an obstacle. you got to jump over it, so. Yeah, indeed. I mean, if you look at the Battle of Gettysburg and Pickett's Charge, a lot of the uh, Confederate losses was uh, centered around these fences, these snake fences. You would see a lot of the bodies. That's because they had to climb over and reform. Warm up right here to my uh, and that's right. very, very similar southeast. here. You've got to climb over, and shot. that's your most vulnerable, especially if there's an enemy regiment right there. They can just shoot or bayonet you without you being able to do anything. 
That's it, right, it's yep, it. it's absolutely right. Oh, it looks like uh, there's some movement on the other side of the field, though. I just want to check on this real quick. Oh, yeah, you're right. I see that. Uh, Confederate forces have pushed down here into this field. That is the uh, 56th versus the 3rd Alabama. Yeah, I, I don't know about that already shot. I think that was a team kill right there. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Oh, dear. Oh. Oh, oh dear. Uh... Oh, that was, that was Troopy, too. That was so Lord. Oh, no. Oh, that's all right. He's learning. It's, it's okay. Oh, dear. It's, it needs to happen. It happens. Uh, looks like Williamson's moving up to, with the rest of his men. Uh, and they might be... It looks like the Uni might be trying to make a play here on the left, or at yeah. least divert forces. Oh, it looks, yeah, I mean, it looks like 6 Texas has joined 56 over here. So that's going to thin out that hill over there on the other side. So, I mean, Williamson himself isn't leading a small force. He's leading quite a sizable line. Oh, is he going for the cap? It looks like he's moving in. I mean, there's not really much opposition to him, so that's not a bad bet. He's moving up, getting into position before any real Union forces can. Well, he's still moving forward. He's, he's going into the backyard here. Yeah, he's going to the backyard. I mean... That's a that's a move. I mean, there's no one stopping him, and now he's looks like he's at the rear of the LFL. They're not even looking he, at no, him. No, he might be able to completely roll the uh, CSA here right yeah. now. I mean, he's leading it. it it's it, yeah. Here it comes. Here it comes. Hearing the LFL panic. Um, don't know what they actually said. It was all in French, but it was very pant voices. So. He's going in for a charge. Yes. Yeah. Let, let uh, charge. Not to do the, you know, closed caption, panic French voices. Is. Yeah, panic French voices, and that's going to t wipe out that Confederate unit. Oh, ma LFL. major ticks of gains from that one. Yeah, and there's the, and there's the remainers, remainers, sorry. Um, of, Looks like six Iranian. Texas chased them down. Which good job yeah. there on Rousseau. Um, yeah, six, well, that huge force, so 20th Georgia, 8th Florida, and 6th Texas, that combined force there yeah. is going to mop up the uh, Williamson's regiment. I, I, mean, I mean, damage is done. And the Union again has capped, and I missed who did the cap. I keep missing uh, who's doing the From what the... I can see, it, from the location, it's TB under Colonel Knight, Lieutenant Colonel Knight, with his small regiment there, they have managed to capture it. What, do you, what so, do you think about the cap there? What do, you, do you think that was deliberate, or do you think, and if it was deliberate, what do you think they're trying to do? From what I can see, I mean, because he's remaining where he is, I think it was deliberate. So, I suppose it's actually a bet, because now you're going to have to force the Confederates to move move around to take it again. Which, after being diverted, two regiments or three regiments being diverted to deal with Williamson, that's, I mean, he's, he's causing the uh, Confederacy to move around a lot. Yeah, now, now they're in the center. My, I guess my only criticism is there's nobody really there to capitalize on this. No, yeah, you're right. I mean, with Williamson's regiment gone, the Confederates have moved through that garden down to where Williamson was, effectively. And they're now volleying into the sides of the Union, which uh, that's going to be that's going to be uh, able to take some losses on the uh, Union side. So. It yeah, looks like it's Jumbo it's back it. on the cap over here, and yeah, he's got that. And I think I'm seeing a charge, yep, from the CSA. Oh, yeah. I think the AMV are going to wipe out Colonel, Lieutenant Colonel Knight's uh, humble band of men. Which is, uh, I, um, four, are they? I don't, I don't even know if he sees them. Uh, the five musketeers, or the four musketeers and Colonel Knight. Yeah, they're, they're not really shooting at them. They're shooting at the guy that's down below. I see. That's, that's very interesting to see. Um, what the musketeers do then? I wouldn't, I wouldn't stay here too long, Knight. Uh, oh, just notice on the... Uh, Second the about left. face to me. Fourth Georgia, the artillery, the they cannon up there on the left. They're going to move on straight down at the uh, in line. Oh, yeah. No, they, um, I'm going to reconnect to the Discord because you're kind of coming in a little bit choppy. We'll see oh, if that yeah. clears it up. Counter march. Left. All right, trying again. Let's see. Let's see how it is. Oh, can you hear me, Clarky? Oh, Clarky, <laughs> Fuji. I'm sorry. Oh, Oh, 
Она опоздала. All right, so we got Williamson charging in on this left side again. Um, tickets have evened out though a little bit here. About engaged, engaged. Maybe CSA got a little bit ahead. All right, in the meantime, here comes the NYV. Parker is charging through. And he's going to try to catch the 20th Georgia here. Oh, but there's a counter charge against 3rd Alabama here. Wait a second, by the uh, 56 in the AGL. And it looks like they are successful in knocking them out and isolating for the NYV, who is now stuck between two lines here. In fact, they are fully surrounded now by multiple units here for the NYV. And it looks like 6 Texas will knock out the NYV and end that threat. In the meantime, we're now at the 20-minute mark. Again, about even on tickets, maybe a little bit ahead for the CSA. And the home go. guard, the 2USC, is back in forward position. Nope, I can hear you now, good Fuji. Uh, there we go. Okay, that was strange. Anyway, um, yeah, so I just watched the Union get attacked. It's an attack on that left flank, or the Union left, uh, against the Confederate force there with the uh, artillery there. And uh, I'm just seeing a lot of dead Union corpses here. Yeah, that was a, um, the CSA did a great counterattack, kind of enveloped the Union team there and just wiped them out. Yeah. Indeed, I mean, that was a definitely a good move there by the um, Confederacy, countering that. Um, we still have the TV there, so that's certainly going to be, they're still contesting it. Um, although it looks like the uh, Confederacy is bringing up, uh, so that's Slaughter there with the 56th. Bring up a regiment to counter that Union regiment. Yep, he's maneuvering to get onto his flank. Indeed, that's. I mean, they've got those rocks to the front, so that's what you, you really need to do. That. They're very, oh, they're very smart. Oh, let's see. Yep, he says fire and charge. Here he goes. Yep, they're going in for a charge, which is probably a smart idea. We'll see how it goes for the uh, the Confederacy. Um, there's definitely a lot of them, and I think that's going to wipe out the rest of the Union on that flank. So that is good moves by the Confederacy. Oh, but here comes Third Alabama, though. Oh, that is a sizable force from the Union. Oh, they've just took a hit, but that's not going to slow them down. There's still too many of them. Uh, Confederacy is wisely pulling out of there, which is what I would do to save those tickets. Oh, very good job from them. That could have been devastating if they got sucked into that fight. Definitely a good move. And uh, looks like the fourth, uh, fourth George's battery is now pointing straight at them. Oh, I'm going to head over there, see if I can take a look, see what they're going to hit. Oh, they moved that cannon very far up here. Oh, this yeah, is interesting. I was, I, I was trying to say uh, that I decided to have a moment that they... Willow! Fourth George's battery's moved up close, but uh, good I don't know if it's, it's a very vulnerable position. I mean, we've got the third Alabama and the New York going in to uh, attack this position again. Although third Alabama is moving down the road, Parker's going to lead a charge. Oh, Lord, here we go. That is a very large force here. Um, will the Confederacy hold? Well, the front line's been pretty much wiped out. Will the, uh, the rear Confederacy line hold? And it looks to me as if they will. I mean, but you also got Williamson going in on the other side. Now there's a counter charge yeah, against him, though, in the center. In, and uh, he's being enveloped. And I, I, I will. I, I'm going to say a criticism I have right now is the right side, as these charges are going in, are not putting pressure on that. I you know, agree. The Union I mean, right. What I'm seeing here is multiple Confederate regiments basically tag teaming these Union attacks, and 
basically, I mean, if you look on the right, there was there's only a very two small forces of Confederate unit there, the um, the Union right that is, and these regiments down here, well, the Union's been pushed back. They've they've lost their foothold at the foot of that hill, and they've been pushed back across the road. So well, and and as you said, I mean, it's not enough. There's not really a lot opposing them, though. They could move back up, no. and they have to fix some of these Confederate regiments, so fact, you know they the don't Confederate swing. Moving out from this top of the hill, they're moving into the the garden once again. Oh yeah. Yeah, there's no reason to sit back and shoot like that, in my opinion. I think if they're going to give you that hill, you need to move up. You got to put pressure on them. I agree. I mean, I think this is a prime time. I mean, you've got the you've got the numbers here on this flank. You you should really be moving it and pushing your home in advantage there. Um, but unfortunately, it looks like they um, delayed it, and well, they haven't even thought about it. And the Confederacy are going to move in and garrison these locations. Yep. Now it's too late. Now they're done. Now they can move back up the hill. The window's closed, and uh, we're yep. at 16, just above 16 minutes, taking losses on both teams, even tickets. Um, still not great for the CSA, but um, uh, not great, but not the worst either. No, I think it's this is eminently winnable here by the CSA, but I'd still put Indeed. the advantage to the Union. Uh, and that that Union left flank, it's, well, that's gone in now. That's completely gone. Um, again, those those Confederate units, they managed to pick apart and tag team those, in my opinion, rather isolated charges, which they didn't really go well because the right flank didn't, didn't push home. And they, obviously, there wasn't any real coordination. Um, they probably couldn't see the two Union regiments push in, uh, whereas the 3rd Alabama and the New York, they can see each other. Yeah, and, and you know, going back to something you said earlier, I'm looking back at this fence. This fence is gone. Oh, wow, I even yeah. just got nailed by this already. Oh, this, yeah, this, I, I, this, this, I think, is a great avenue of attack right now. Yeah. Oh, I heard and he got hit again, man. That already is... That is that's brutal. Yeah, who, who's on that union already? Who's doing this? Let me check. 50 sec Yeah, it's 50 second. Oh well, yeah, good shots by the 52nd there, definitely putting in the work there, no, minimizing the defenses here. And yeah, now rinse and repeat, we have another attack on the left side, but... Oh yeah, another attack on the left, oh, oh, that's that's going to be a bad hit. Lots of the uh, Alabama just got wiped out, and then uh, a lot of the ones at the front, they got knocked over, that's going to delay them, allow the Confederacy to get more shots on. New York. Once again, moving in on that left flank, going to be able to... They're going to clear that Confederate front line, but once again, Confederacy with that defense in depth, got that line to the rear under Slaughter, and I think they're going to be able to hold. And we got Williamson has moved up this time on the left side, which I think he might be able to hold a little bit better. A little bit wiser, I agree. I mean, they didn't. They took some serious losses getting in here, but they still have some numbers, and... Uh, at the moment, the AMV who's opposing them aren't numerous, although the LFL has just walked in here. And obviously, Six Techs is just behind this building, ready to support. I don't know, here comes LFL. This volley might change the equation. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you might be standing behind the picket fence, but that's not really going to stop a musket from a 50 cal round. No, you can see the uh, NYV has already been pushed back. <laughs> and now this element here is just going to get picked apart. Yeah, third Alabama's seriously depleted. And still no pressure on this other side. I mean, they got one unit up here. They've got, you know, you know, 10th. It's not nothing. They got Fort George. They got to hold in the center. I mean, this is not nothing, but... No, but I mean, look what the Union's got on this right, on the Union right. You've got two large regiments and one smaller regiment there, and they're just... They just seem to be content having a gun battle, which uh, certainly confuses me. There's a bigger blob forming to the north. I was hearing it pick up the colors call, which is definitely good. Although, I'm not sure what it's going to really do for you down there. You're just going to be feeding me the production tickets. Yeah, but I think uh, as uh, who's moving up here, 20th Georgia, this will be the end of this uh, left side position here for this union uh, oh looks like uh troopy skinhead is having a conversation with nyv corporal hamilton oh <laughs> looks like uh they've made a friend ah. with the, uh, left of the man very interesting story for the ages indeed um i've just noticed where the union artillery here on the union left is it is quite close so this is the 52nd two you've got two guns under the 52nd here 
And uh, I think they're going to be putting down some frit. Yep. That, they're hitting the, uh, that, that sort of garden area in the center. Yeah, it's, it's uh, Fort George is sitting there. Yep, Mr. Clarky. Yep. That's, uh, Which I, I like that position he's in. It's, it's you know, it's... Where he the can, house is in that corner. He, he can flex where he needs to, which I think is good. I agree. That's that's a really good position. The the cannon shells are not able to um, hit anyone in that corner. And whilst anyone further to the left of that building is vulnerable, that cannon is going to say, uh, sorry, that building is going to shield you from uh, rifle and cannon fire. So that's an excellent position. Oi, bruv. Oi, bruv. This ain't this ain't your area, bruv. Oh, hello. But hey, hello. Hey, once again, though, hello. Confederate forces—they've—they've okay. they've put on the defensive line. Uh, make and, make, uh, make love, Union. not war. I mean, I'm seeing the New York and the uh, Third Alabama. They're making some serious attacks, but unsupported. It, no, they're they're, they're not really bad gonna... attacks either. But yeah, it, it's it's there needs to be pressure on the other side. I mean, I as agree, you can they... see, the tickets are even. So it's you know, you could push. You could yeah. afford to lose a little bit here from the Union. I agree. What, what really needs to happen is the New York and the Third need to coordinate an assault with, on the Confederate lines with these regiments on the right-hand side to allow the Confederates, or sorry, the Union, to attack without being focused down. Because that's all that's happening on that Union left. Every time they push in, they just get focused down and wiped out, whilst the uh, Union right just sort of stands there and shooting away, but not really a threat to the Confederates. No, I, I agree. Yeah, this is at some point they need to come to some kind of other strategy. This, this is it's it's doing some damage, but I, I don't know if it'll be enough. No, I agree. Um, they really need to get a runner and um, coordinate a proper attack with these um, regiments if they really want to take this hill. Oh, so we have movement on the right now. Uh, who's uh, they, heard, they heard us talking. Alabama. They heard us talking. Oh, 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 third, oh it's third Alabama, Alabama that did it. <laughs> All right, so Williams is going to try it on the right, although second U.S. Is oh, he's going with them. Uh, so third Alabama is kind of, okay, he's, he's kind of uh, getting these guys to move right. up here a little bit. Williams is leading the charge here. And the crew, the Four Union, are going to reclaim positions west. at the foot of the hill. So that is, um, that is some good progress, because um, they took that with very minimal losses. They just effectively walked in there. Oh, Williamson <laughs> nearly got hit directly. I, 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 I saw him at the Mori next to him just blow up. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> Williamson's just like, yep, yeah, we're not gonna, don't worry about that. Just keep going. Williamson's gonna. Hey. Williamson's gonna have a conversation with the uh, Confederate artillery. <laughs> oh, he told him they only killed one. He, he said they're a little bit low. <laughs> He's helping him out. That's a, you know, what you said. He's a, he's a he's, he's a teacher go. at heart. You know, he's okay. Um, it, okay, but in my opinion, what I would really do is oh, we've got more union. Uh, so look here. I like SB's moving in. I like this. A full push on this side, I think, could work really I think well. This is a good idea. I would personally, I would have one regiment move up and take those cannons, whilst the others move in to the now open fence line, which is rather open with the Confederates walking away. Oh, this I think is, a and I think is a little bit uh, overextended right now. I'd get back if I was Max Reeves. Yeah. They're just picking up all the... <laughs> yeah, I mean, those cannons are undefended. If you're going to let them sit there, because they have perfect shots on you, if you're going to uh, let them sit there, because... Uh, this, this again, I, I'm going to be critical of the just Union. just did a huge f shot on the... Uh, Union line here. They're taking way too long to get this attack because now look at all the CSA moving up here. Yeah, you had the I manpower agree. and you kind of sat there for a little bit. Yeah, I agree. They had the manpower. They had the Confederates walking away in the opposite direction. Obviously, they didn't know. And they should have pressed that attack, but obviously, they didn't know and they didn't see. And that slight delay has caused that to kind of falter. And that opening, once again, has closed. Yeah, I mean, I, to be honest with you, I'd still launch the attack, even if it fails. Oh, I mean, if you have a look, going straight into that open fence line is still a viable option, which it looks like someone has decided is an idea. Colonel Knight here, leading the TB, moving into the very... Oh, he's, yep, looks like he knocked out Fort George, and now he's going to try to turn yeah. on... If he gets some moving support, on, I think yeah. he'd do a, this be a really yeah, good charge. Yeah, I mean, that second, second court, yep, there it is. There's the call to support. They've charged in. And that is a good move here for the Union. Uh, they've moved in, taken that area, and what's now happened is the guns aren't particularly facing them that much. 
Tennessee yeah. once loaded. Are they, oh. so they going to go? Are they going to charge up the hill? Or are they going to chase that Confederate regiment? Ah, uh, they're going to chase or so, but that's a they're lot gonna, of tickets he can get. And yeah. They might catch him on breaking here soon and then cap yeah, the point. Yeah, I mean, that Confederate regiment that was chasing them just got run down. Clarky here, though, leading the fourth into the, the attack. Uh, uh, I don't know. That, that's a little scattered for my taste, to be honest with you. Indeed, that was very, very, um, very scattered. I don't think that was a good move. Uh, that, that it can be a problem with commanding. I've noticed that sometimes I call people to move with me, and I look behind me a few seconds later, and it's like it's just me. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's tough because you want to get in fast to support, you know. Indeed. But it's... I mean, I I know Clarky. Uh, well, that was a good call in terms of a charge. Unfortunately, his forces in, in pa on paper was a good idea, sorry. But in practice, his forces were not able to carry that out. They did not have the organization nor the... I don't think they really had the manpower to protest the Union here. Hey, Corporal Pivel, you're at the 2nd U.S. right now. Yeah, but there's a Confederate line charging the Union in the rear of this. So that is the... Um, it's the ANV here. They're mopping up the remnants of um, Knights. Here. Yeah, that's not bad. Well, um, but again, so Knight's going to make a final stand. Yeah, he will with that pistol. There he goes. And that is the uh, the Union cut off. Uh, I, th I, I, I think he's overextending this, though. This yeah. I think. Second U.S. is now cut off, but the Confederates are now going to charge in. Williams is going to have a huge force to defend. Ah, there it is. There's the breaking, and then Union is set on point. Look who's there. Parker's there. Point. GC's there. Yeah, Union's on point. Confederate forces around here are pretty much non-existent, and that is going to be... Good moves for the Union. NYV holding the road, and there's a huge Confederate charge on the 20th of Georgia and 56th Virginia. They're going to rush down that road, get a side charge into the NYV. I think I saw a friendly... Not in time, though. Not in time. Not in time. The Union are going to take that, and that is a win for the Federal Forces. Yeah, that that's... is... As critical as I, as, we, as I think I was, and, and maybe you too, I think you agree with me, the, the Union, I think, at the end there, pulled it out with that final attack. I agree. I agree. There were some very bad moves, uh, well, very good calls, and very wide openings that weren't exploited during this game, but towards that end, it, they just managed to save the day, especially with Williamson, I think, move, deciding to take command of his regiment to the right-hand side. I think it kind of encouraged the rest of the regiments to move up, and... Um, I think from there that that managed to push through. Yeah, I agree. And I, I think it eased communications. It, you know, it's a lot easier Indeed, to send a runner, yeah. you know, two feet away than across the map. Indeed, so. as well as if you can just see a huge regiment there. I mean, you might as well move in with them. Yeah. So that was a that was a good call by Williamson there on the right hand side, and obviously it won. It, it won the Union of the day. But if you have a look at the casualties, that it's not like the Union took it without a loss. I mean, that is a huge disparity there. Um. About four, just under, yeah, about 400 casualties more for the Union and the Confederacy. But again, they were on the attack, so that's to be expected. Yep, you know, it's it's a, a win's the win. Um, you know, they, they get, what was it? You know, they need their men more than I need them or something like that. Anyway, exactly. Um, yeah, I think I know what you mean. Yeah, but um, they don't yeah. have men to spare. So in in any event, uh, that's it for the map one. They're going to switch over to um, Conquest, so we'll take a couple minutes break, and uh, we'll see Fuji back for the second match.